Um, so we're super excited for a season four to come. Spotty, obviously, Ivy and Harley are at you know, odds with one of them leading into the few. And I'm obsessed with the quote that you said, uh, socially conscious brand of evil. I'm obsessed with that. Love that. Love Poison Ivy. What can I tell us about how the relationship is going? Obviously, they're going to be at odds with the season of some clip. Um, so how are you guys going to explore that? How is that going to um, well, I think it's, you know, each one of them is trying to like succeed in a different world, you know, so I think we're going to, what we're going to explore this season is how they navigate through the obstacles that they're going to encounter, you know, because they're both in a new world, you know, Harley doesn't know anything about how to be a hero and Ivy doesn't know anything how to be, you know, uh, how to be the, the leader of the Legion of Doom. Uh, so I think it's about them, you know, learning and growing and, and then at the same time trying to reconcile, you know, with each other in their personal life, separate from their professional life. Yeah, and you have a lot of fun with, at the end of season three, Poison Ivy almost destroys the entire world. You appreciate how powerful she is on her own, and now she runs the most dangerous group of villains on the planet. So arguably, Poison Ivy is the most dangerous person on the planet. And then Harley is, at the end of the day, just a woman with a baseball bat and a willingness to succeed, you know, joining up a group of superheroes who are also just people you know, like out there doing their best. So, I mean, you, you really see Harley as the underdog trying to help fight crime and supervillains and while Poison Ivy runs this entire gang of supervillains. Like, so we all kind of, there's like, well, like, well, she, well, she kind of like, she's a good, good guy now, Harley being a part of that family. Yeah, well, it, it's going to be a journey for her, you know, so, and we're going to see it from the very beginning, you know, when she first starts, she's really bad at it, you know, and she immediately fails. You know, so you have to, you kind of see her, you know, trying to get better, you know, and getting help from Alfred, actually, you know, who give her some pointers, you know, how to be a hero. Um, and, and then, you like, you kind of, like, see her, like, growing with her bad family. I mean, whether if she succeeds or not at the end of this journey, you're going to have to watch the season. <laughs> But I can tell you it's going to be like a really fun journey for Harley. Yeah, and I think over the course of the season, you find out that Harley Quinn is about Harley Quinn being the hero for Harley Quinn's life. You know, and now that she's with Poison Ivy, she wants to be the hero of both of their lives. And I think that's her journey. Um, one more question. I want to switch it over to him. Uh, the notes you guys got about the back win. Um, yeah, well, it's like, you know, it, it was such an important part of the season, you know, because you're used to see, you know, Harley in our show with her regular clothing, you know, so now we are, for most of the season, you know, she's just going to wear something different. So it was really important, you know, to like hit it right and make sure that all the parts involved, you know, were happy with the costume. So it just took a lot of searching, you know, we have a fantastic character designer, Warner Brothers, Shane Lines, you know, who was doing like the original design. Um, and, you know, it just took a lot of iterations, you know, a lot of versions of the costume to get it to the right place. Uh, but the basic concept was, you know, we want to do something that is more bad family, but with a little bit of Harley fun, you know, so that's why we introduced like the colors and some of the cutouts in the costume. So it wouldn't be so conservative and so like strict. Yeah, and those sort of things are super important for all of the executives in the room at DC. And because you do want to come to Comic Con in a year or two and you see Bat Harley on the floor. So you do, you, you have that in your mind where this should be something that's cool enough for somebody to put on and walk around in and feel awesome in. So are we going to continue to see like small glimpses of Dr. Quinzel and how is that going to affect the story? Uh, I think Dr. Quinzel is always a part of Harley, you know, we're definitely going to see her coming back to advise Harley when she's in a sticky situation, but yeah, she always reverts to that, you know, it's kind of like her inner head, you know, telling her, you know, where to go and what she needs to do next, so we're definitely going to see her again. How do you go about picking the array of characters that you display on the show? Because you've done such a great job building out the DC universe, I think better than any other project. 
<laughs> well, I think it, everything starts with the scripts, you know. So all the main characters, you know, are going to be like uh, we're going to we're always going to take them from the script and the outlines, you know. And then from there, you know, we kind of like build around it, you know. Like I don't know, we have like a party with superheroes or you know super villains, and you was like, what super villains can I put in this party that are good fillers, you know? And then you just go to like the very very long list of DC characters that we have, and then you find really good ones like uh, was it codpiece? Codpiece, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or you know we have uh, I love uh, Man Bad, you know, like and we're gonna bring him back this season, but you know I love when he stretches the camera, you know, like to communicate. So I I think like that all the characters are in a way so fun and sometimes so ridiculous, you know, and you put them like in a serious situation, you know, like in a gala. And then you put man bat like in a little bow tie. <laughs> so, so it's like that's where a lot of the fun comes from. Yeah. yeah, and the executive producers are such huge fans of the DC universe. It's like there's a lot to pull on because they like you remember something like Snowflame. It was something like maybe you had seen inside of like a you know an after school special sort of comic book in like 1987, and there's this guy to teach you not to use cocaine, but somehow I get superpowers from cocaine, so I think the message is lost. And now you can pull on that because it's funny in itself. Or Codpiece, who it's like, I remember Codpiece when I was a kid, because he's a guy with a giant laser beam on his crotch. And there's other ones like, you know, Cock King and other ones who are just a guy in a chicken suit who mixes it up and is willing to do whatever. Just checking it throughout the background. And some you, know, you get speaking parts and can find their way onto the show. But I think it really helps that so many people involved are such huge fans, their knowledge goes so deep. And there's that character that you saw and loved when you were a kid, regardless of how ridiculous. And it's like, I remember Bouncing Boy. And so who is crazier to fight Weasel than Bouncing Boy? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You're welcome.